This is going to be a brief tutorial about photogrammetry and how you can take photographs of objects and turn them into three-dimensional assets that you can use in Blender. Um, we're not just going to use Blender for this, we're going to use a couple of different programs, one of which is called Meshroom. It's free and open source, it's made by Alice Vision. Um, and kind of a caveat with Meshroom here is that it only runs on Windows or Linux and it will only really work if you have a CUDA enabled GPU. Um, so basically that means a fairly recent NVIDIA GPU to use. We're also going to use a free program called Instant Meshes and of course we're going to use Blender. So to start off with um, we're not really going to be covering how to take photographs for photogrammetry here but so these are some of the photographs that we're going to be using to reconstruct this rock and you can just kind of see that these photographs sort of orbit the subject and they start down low and then they get a little higher and that's basically what you do is you kind of make a dome out of photographs so to start off with we're gonna start in Meshroom we're gonna take all of our photographs and we're going to just drag and drop them into Meshroom you can see all of our photographs over here before we can start we have to save our project so I'm going to click Save As we'll save this as Rock Demo and then basically um, we can just hit start at this point okay so Meshroom has finished it took a solid 27 minutes and this is a pretty advanced GPU this is an RTX 3090 uh, so be patient with this process because it might take a while so once it's finished and we had it go all the way through to texturing which is the default once it's finished with that you can go into your uh, project folder here and go into the folder called Meshroom Cache then Texturing and I'll go into the latest one you can see I've done this before and you can see that there is an object here in here now called texturedmesh.obj so in Blender I'm going to delete my default cube and I'm going to import that obj file and this will take just a minute because it's a pretty dense mesh okay and that brings in this object which you can see it's our rock and some of the surrounding ground um, but of course blender has no idea what it is it, or uh, meshroom has no idea what it is it doesn't realize it's a rock it doesn't know which ways up or how big it should be so first thing I'm going to do is go to my object menu and set the origin to the geometry that will allow me to kind of move this thing out, flatten it out, and establish an up and a down. And that will be really helpful for me. Okay, and you can see also if we go into a material preview that this thing has a texture on it and it looks really, really good. Um, so I want to get rid of everything that is not the rock. I don't really want all this ground around it. So I'm going to go into a wireframe view from the top, tab into edit mode. Because this is so dense, that will take just a few seconds. And then deselect everything and start just doing box selections all the way through the mesh here. Okay, now let's delete all of those vertices. That cleaned things up quite a bit. Great, so I'm going to delete all of those vertices. And now that's looking pretty clean so 
Now we're going to do a little bit of automatic cleanup. We'll tab into edit mode and we're going to select just a single vertex that we know is part of the actual mesh of the rock and hit control L and that will select everything that's linked together and there will be some parts that aren't like we've got some vertices that are floaters this is a good way to get rid of those so I'm now going to now invert my selection control I and that selects everything that's not actually connected so we'll delete those vertices then to fill in this hole on the bottom we're going to take a couple of steps um, we're going to go to our selection menu select by trait non-manifold and you'll see that'll kind of select our hanging out edge here um, but it also selects some kind of weird spots and occasionally it'll select a triangle that makes a face so we don't really want those so the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to tap delete and we're just going to delete faces okay now we'll go back once again select by trait non-manifold and that's a cleaner selection I'm gonna deal with that separately because that one's a surprise so we'll tap F and fill that with an end gone and then I'm gonna come in here and do the same thing to that little spot there okay so there is a single big end gone filling the bottom of our rock now in order to fix that we are going to go into sculpt mode and we're going to check our dino topo dine topo checkbox what that does is when we actually sculpt on this thing it's basically going to just subdivide it a little bit so we'll come through here and we'll kinda hit our edges oh and I like to take the dine topo detail down to about two We'll come in here and just smooth this whole thing out basically turn the strength all the way up and we're trying not to get sections, trying not to affect sections where we actually have recorded detail that's good. So I don't want to hit too far up with this brush. But we also don't want to leave this mess on the bottom alone. So going to strike a good balance there if we can. And this doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to go into instant meshes in a minute and retopologize this whole thing anyway. So really all we're trying to do is make a good facsimile at the moment. Okay. It's actually looking okay. All right, I'm, I think I'm, I'm, uh, I think I'm happy enough with that. So now at this point we will export our mesh again. So we'll go File and Export and OBJ, and we're going to call this one Rock02 High Poly OBJ. We're going to check selection only and export it. All right, and now we'll go into the Instant Meshes program and rock zero two high poly is right there alright and you can see our target vertex count is thirty six thousand vertices if we go back into blender here and look at our statistics you can see that this rock has about five hundred eighty two thousand almost five hundred eighty three thousand vertices so that's a good reduction there but i think we can get it even lower let's go down to about eight and we'll click on solve and we'll check out the flow of the vertices there and that looks pretty good to me it looks like we have edges going along what are actual kind of natural rock edges so I'm not gonna mess with that so we'll 
click on this second solve button to see kind of what the solution mesh looks like. We'll extract our mesh and then we're going to save this out and we'll save this as rock02 lowpoly.obj. Click OK. And then we're back in Blender. So you'll notice we still have this original file open. That's on purpose. We don't want to, we're not ready to close this thing out yet. So now I'm going to import another OBJ and we're going to import that rock02 low poly. You can see that it pops in right over the top of the old one. That's exactly what we want. We don't want to move it. We want them occupying the exact same space. So let's hide our rock02 high poly. We'll rename it for clarity and let's hide it. And our low poly doesn't have a material on it or anything like that. Let's tab into edit mode. You can see all of these seams are marked sharp. So if we go to uh, edge select mode and right click, then we can clear the sharp seams. We can shade this smooth. Now let's go and let's actually make a material for it. So first things first, I'm going to make an image texture. We'll get this a color map. And we'll make a new canvas for this. We'll call this Rock02 Color. I'm going to make it a 2K texture. OK, and you can see that that blank texture is there now. And um, I need to UV unwrap this object, so let's go and just go to our UV menu, tap U, and click Smart UV Project. That will allow me to bake a texture into that slot. Mm -hmm. So now we'll go back to our layout, unhide our high poly rock, shift click so that our active selection, the lighter orange, is our low poly rock. Then we're in cycles, so we know we can bake. So let's go down to our baking menu. And we're going to, instead of combined bake type, we're just going to do diffuse. We're going to unchecked check both direct and indirect light. We don't want to bake the lighting into a texture, just the color information. Selected to active, since that's what we did here. And I'm going to check this box for the cage. Just enter 0.1 as my values for both of these boxes. And then we will click on our bake button here. While that bakes, I'm going to split out my window so that we can actually see our rock 02 and you can see now the result there it just finished while I was splitting out my window there and that baked nicely so if we actually were to hide our high poly rock you can see all of that photo information on our low poly rock it's not perfect yet but it looks pretty good okay so next thing let's uh, let's bake our normal map let's go back to our shading and I'm going to delete this image texture node and just make a new one. New image texture, we'll just call this rock02 normal. Click OK. And we will plug that into a normal map node. Come back to our layout and do the same selection. Instead of diffuse, we now choose normal. And I'm going to pull up our normal map, our blank normal map over here. Same thing. Click bake. OK, and that looks like a pretty good normal map. So we can now close the high poly rock. We can go back to our shading menu and we can make this into a proper material. So rock zero to color. All right, so that now has a normal map and it has a color map. The bottom is still messed up, so that's the last thing we'll fix here. We'll go into texture painting. 
and basically what we're going to do here is just use our clone tool and we're going to shift right click to identify a clone source and then we're going to paint all that nice photographic rock information onto the bottom of our mesh here and that is going to make it look a lot better it's going to be a convincing rock and it's going to be an asset that we can use and reuse for a long time without taking up massive amounts of memory because it's reasonably low poly and before we finish here I'll show you one last thing we can do so I live in the Mojave Desert and we are known here for our distinctive red rocks of uh, which this is obviously one um, you don't necessarily always want that in a scene so one thing you can do uh, with your shader node network here is you can just add a hue and saturation node after your image texture and you can take the saturation down or push the hue around a little bit so that you know this rock can be more of a gray rock more of a granite looking thing or even you know shift a little bit toward like an alien landscape or something like that but you can have control over that and that's kinda nice to be able to sort of neutralize the rocks like that a little bit and of course one last thing uh, before we go you've got a new normal map and you've got a color map here both of which need to be saved so if you see this little star next to your uh, image menu in an image editor then you need to go and save those images out onto your hard drive or else they'll disappear when you shut down blender anyway I hope that's helpful thanks for watching and have a great day